Welcome to Hammond Power Solutions Intermediate Training on Properly Selecting Line Reactors. HPS Centurion R line reactors are designed to be used on both the line or input side of a VFD and the load or output side of the VFD. There is no derating required. The same reactor skew can be used on either the load or line side. The diagram below shows a typical VFD installation with reactors on both the line and load side. Bypass contactors can be used to isolate the VFD and start the motor across the line. The bypass contactors are shown in figures 1, 2, and 3. It's important to note the location of the reactors in relation to contactors 1 and 2. Line reactors are found on the line or input of the VFD where it converts AC power to DC power. All three AC faces energize a single common DC bus. AC to DC power conversion creates current and voltage harmonics which distorts the perfect red sine wave to the green sine wave. Line reactors will help to mitigate this distortion. Line reactors are needed when the facility is violating the utilities IEEE 519 standards or when the facility is being designed to meet IEEE 519. Line reactors are recommended to be used and coordinated with active harmonic filters. Line reactors should be considered whenever a customer is concerned about power quality. Line reactors can help mitigate VFDs which are tripping due to voltage spikes from lightning, utility switching, or other eternal events. This nuisance tripping shows up when input overvoltage or DC bus overvoltage faults occur. Vacuum breakers or vacuum contactors can also cause voltage spikes. Don't underestimate the need to mitigate voltage spikes. Nuisance tripping can cause costly manufacturing downtime. Line reactors should be considered if a facility has backup generators to aid in proper operation and minimum sizing. 240 volt open delta configurations can benefit from additional impedance. If the phase to phase input voltages differ more than 2%, consider adding line reactors. If the non linear load is more than 25% of the total system load, at a minimum, line reactors should be added. If the transformers are loaded more than 75% of the rated nameplate, line reactors should be considered. VFDs less than 10 horsepower often do not use a DC link choke. This creates significantly higher current harmonics per amperage of load than in a typical VFD, and therefore higher total harmonic current distortion can occur, line reactors should be considered. Load reactors are found on the output of the VFD between the VFD and the motor. The HPS Centurion CRX line reactors can be used interchangeably on the line and load side of the VFD. The output of a VFD uses IGBTs, a type of semiconductor, to quickly switch the voltage on and off in a pulse width modulated or PWM output. Varying the width of the pulses simulates different AC frequencies and voltages to control the motor speed. The output of a VFD can cause what is called the pulse width modulated or PWM reflective wave phenomenon. Long lead links can cause voltage spikes of two or four times the DC bus voltage to appear in the cabling or motor windings. The DC bus voltage is the AC voltage times 1.41 or the square root of two. These voltage spikes can result in bearing and or motor insulation damage. Long lead links between the VFD and motor are usually defined by the VFD manufacturer in their O&M manuals. Typically, motor links greater than 100 feet may need an output reactor. VFD manufacturers often suggest that the output carrier frequency be set below 6 kHz and preferably below 4 kHz on long lead links. Longer links greater than 300 feet or 90 meters may need a DVDT or sine wave filter. Output reactors also reduce the audible motor noise and lower motor heating. There are typically five main pieces of information required for proper reactor selection. More information may be needed, but this information will typically be sufficient to start for many applications. Number one, the system voltage. 
Number two, motor amperage or horsepower. Number three, the motor's service factor and if this service factor will normally be used. Number four, impedance, typically defined as 3% or 5% in North America. And number five, will the unit be used on the VFD's line or load side? Although in HPS's case, the Centurion reactors can be used interchangeably on either the line or load side. There may be other data points that may be useful to have, such as the VFD to motor lead length, the VFD's rated amperage, the motor type, and carrier frequency, but for the sake of basic training, we will cover these five parameters. Incoming voltage is typically easy to determine. In North America, it's usually 600, 480, 240, or 208 volts. Other voltages are available in the selection charts or the ePortal configuration systems. The output voltage equals the input voltage, except the output voltage is reduced by the percent of the input reactor's impedance if an input reactor is used. Note that some VFD outputs follow an unique volts or hertz curve that may differ in both frequency and voltage from the input. Please consult HPS for these situations to properly size a load reactor. Line reactors have both a horsepower and a current rating. Ultimately, reactors are current rated devices. Horsepower ratings are for convenient selection. HPS's horsepower ratings typically follow the NEC motor amperage charts. A user is often faced with several amperage values, including the reactor's amperage, the VFD's amperage, the motor's amperage, and the motor's service factor. The motor's service factor must be factored into the total amperage if the application will use this extra capacity continuously. In most cases, the motor's amperage is best used to properly size a line reactor. Line reactors are usually sized for 1.5, 3, or 5% impedance in North America. Other values may be more typical in other parts of the world. 1.5% reactors are generally used in series with 3% or 5% reactors to fine-tune impedance levels and are rarely used separately. Select 3% impedance for general input line buffering. If an output reactor is also used, a 3% line reactor should be considered due to the total voltage drop of two line reactors. 3% line reactors can be used on the VFD output to lower motor sound and temperature rise. Select 5% impedance as part of a solution to meet IEEE 519 harmonic standards and when a VFD does not have a DC choke. If a facility is already experiencing power quality issues, 5% should be considered. 5% is a good choice on the output to mitigate the reflective wave issue up to 500 feet or 150 meters. Some manufacturers have separate reactors which are used on either the line or load side of the VFD but can't be interchanged. HPS makes it easy in selecting either a line or load reactor. The Centurion reactors can be used in both the line and load side of a VFD without any duration. Thank you for completing this presentation and we hope that you have found it informative.